Hey everybody, Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the VDS or Virtual Distributed Switch. We're gonna talk about the design, what it looks like, and then we'll get into a little kind of mini lab. I'll show you guys what it looks like in my environment. And then in the next video, we'll go into the NVDS. And then after that, we'll start to wrap up things by comparing the two. We'll talk about design choices. And then of course, we'll do some labs. So let's get to it. So as you see here, we have three hosts. We have vSphere host A, B, and C. And connected to those hosts, we have two uplinks per host. We have VMNIC0 and VMNIC1. And this is the same across all of these. I just didn't label them all the same. So we have VMNIC0, one here. We have VMNIC0 and one here, and so on. Now, those hosts are physically connected to a top of rack switch. That top of rack switch is really out of scope for this conversation. Suffice to say, we just have uplink connectivity to the physical network. Now what I want you to focus on is below that, we have a VDS or distributed switch. And in this case, the name of it is called prod-VDS. And we've gone inside of that VDS, we've configured it in vCenter, and we've told it that we wanna create a distributed port group. And that port group is called DB, so I guess we would use that for uh, database servers, most likely database VMs. As part of that configuration, we've also gone in and said, hey, distributed switch, I want you to own VMNIC0 and VMNIC1 on host C, VMNIC0 and 1 on host B, and the same on host A. So those uplinks are directly owned by that VDS, meaning they're not available if we had another VDS on that host, or we had a standard switch or an NVDS, doesn't matter. Those uplinks are spoken for, they're completely reserved for only this VDS. So one of the main points that I wanna highlight here is that all of the VDS configuration is done in vCenter creating this VDS, adding these three hosts to the VDS, assigning these uplinks, configuring this port group, 100% of that is completely done in vCenter. This is an important thing to remember because when we get to the NVDS, it will be different than this. The other thing that you should take away from this video is that the VDS always has to have physical uplinks. Now, I guess technically that's not true. We could have a VDS and have port groups that have no connectivity to the outside world, and we could still switch within a host, that's perfectly fine. But if we wanna to talk to anything outside of that host, then yes, we have to have dedicated uplinks for that VDS. Now that we've talked a little bit about the design of the VDS, let's go ahead and check out the lab and I'll show you guys an actual VDS that I have set up and we'll do a little tour of what things look like there. All right, so here we are inside of my lab. We're gonna take a quick look at a VDS that I already have configured. So let's focus in right here. We have two hosts, we have 254.13 and 254.23. Now in this case, we're gonna spend our time in this network tab right here. So let's go ahead and click that. And you'll see here, it opens up right here. That's exactly what I wanted to show you, which is test-vds. And if we go over to the host tab, we can actually see which hosts have been added to this VDS. In other words, what this means, if I expand this VDS, it means any port group configured in this VDS is now available to any VMs on this host. Now clearly I don't have any port groups. So if I wanted to create a port group, I could go and say distributed port group, new distributed port group. I'll say uh, management VLAN 22, we'll say. I'm gonna select next. For VLAN type, since I said VLAN 22, let's go ahead and just change that to 22. We're gonna leave everything else to the default for this demo. I'll go ahead and hit next and we'll say finish. Okay, now that we've got that port group created, now I can safely say that any VM on 254.13 can now use this port group right here, management v22. So let's just confirm that. So if we go back to our host, I gotta find out, let's see which, which VMs are on this one. I don't have any, of course I don't. So you know what, we're, this is a good practice. We're gonna create a new VM. We're gonna create an empty VM, so nothing at all. We're just gonna create next, next, next. And that looks good, that looks good. And I am just going blazing through that. Okay, there we go. So now we have this new VM, and this VM is sitting, we'll see here, right here, host 254.13. So just to illustrate my point, let's go ahead and edit the settings on this VM. And let's go to network adapter right here. We'll go to browse. Okay, so there we go. So see right here, management v22, and it shows distributed switch right here, test-VDS. So that looks perfect. So we could say, okay, I wanna go ahead and connect to that. In my case, I'm not going to, because I'm actually going to remove this VDS very soon, but that's how you would do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. 
That looks good. Now let's go back to the network tab. And I wanna show you one more thing. Let's go to the configure section of this VDS. So all I've done is selected the VDS here and I've gone to configure right here. Now here we have the option to select or configure all of these different settings. We can set up NetFlow. We could set up a collector so we could export NetFlow from this VDS to some external monitoring station. We can set up LACP. We can do all kinds of things. We can set up health checks and port mirroring. We can mirror to an external uh, location like a monitoring or a capture station or something like that running Wireshark. But the point is all of that configuration is done from vCenter. Now in the next video, we'll be going into the NVDS and I'll be showing you what that looks like in vCenter as well. And keep in mind that that is actually managed from NSX manager. So we'll be kind of bouncing between the two so I can show you what it looks like on both sides. Now from an NSX standpoint, we're not even talking about NSX. Everything we've done in this video is just plain virtual distributed switch or VDS. There's nothing related to NSX up until this point. I wanted to bring it up though because there is a configuration option where we can use this existing VDS with NSX. And again, we'll go into that in a later video. So until next time, take care. I'll see you in the next one.